Hey guys, welcome back to the Fly Trap Garden. In today's video, we will be looking at the six most well-known and famous Venus fly traps in the world. So stick around. If you are new to this channel, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of carnivorous plants just like this Venus flower trap. So if you think you'd enjoy that, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so that YouTube actually tells you when we make a video. So let's start the video. Before I start listing the six most well-known and famous Venus flower traps, there are some criteria that we need to take care of first, such as what actually makes them famous and why we're talking about these six Venus flytraps are not every other one in the world. Well, the six that I have chosen for today's video are all registered cultivars and they are all well-known and very famous Venus flytraps that most people can get at stores around them. This doesn't mean that they are the absolute most well-known and famous Venus flytraps as that's kind of impossible to track. A cultivar is a specific artificially selected and bred towards a specific outcome type of plant. For example, if you want red roses, you take all the plants that are slightly red, breed them and take the babies that are red up and make them breed with each other again. And eventually you get a super red rose that you can say, this is, let's say, regal red rose and you've registered that and the whole world knows that. This specific cultivar that you have created as the regal red rose. Also, if you stick around at the end of the video, we will be checking up on our young Drosera Adelaide that was infected with fungus gnat larvae and we will be respraying it with its second application of neem oil to make sure that we really kill those guys. Without further ado, let's start listing the top six Venus flytraps in the world. The first two Venus flytraps we will talk about are the world's biggest Venus flytraps. First off, we have Venus flytrap DCXL. This is one of the biggest Venus flytrap cultivars that you can find in the world. In springtime, they shoot up tall traps, sometimes up to 13 centimeters in length, right out of the ground and makes their big traps up in the air. These traps are generally recorded to be around five centimeters in size. However, later on in the season, they start to make smaller and shorter traps as the season slowly cools down and they start getting towards autumn time, which is when Venus fly traps go dormant. So obviously they're not gonna have the biggest, brightest traps when they need to go to sleep. The second biggest Venus fly trap in the world, or actually the biggest Venus fly trap in the world, is the Venus fly trap B52. This Venus fly trap was actually registered as a cultivar because of its very strong, vigorous growth and amazing coloration that you can see inside of the traps of the plant. But seeing as this plant is actually such a strong grower and so vigorous at growing, it actually has the world's biggest traps. These traps measure out to be 5.7 centimeters or 2.25 inches if you're an American. Obviously, these traps are massive and can easily catch small lizards and even frogs which you can often see in some of the famous videos that go around on YouTube. And obviously the B52 and the DCXL always have competition with each other to see which one of them can actually make the biggest traps between the two. Next up is Venus flytrap Akai Ryu. This is also known as the Red Dragon Venus flytrap. The reason why this Venus flytrap is so famous is simply because it has super, super dark, red maroon traps and leaves. Almost every single aspect of this Venus flytrap is completely dark red and maroon color. It is actually very, very beautiful. And you know that even if you get this plant and you may not provide it as much sunlight as you wish you could, it will still stay a beautiful dark maroon color. However, in midwinter, it is also described to go slightly green in the center of the plant and this is part of the description of when this Venus flytrap was registered as a cultivar. If you do grow this plant and it does go green in winter, just remember that's actually normal. Next up, we have Venus flytrap bristletooth. Now this Venus flytrap is a slightly smaller grower than a typical Venus flytrap, 
but it has super, super interesting bristles on its trap. The teeth aren't long like this typical Venus flytrap, but rather small, staggered, and very bristly. But this isn't where it gets its name from. This Venus flytrap was actually named this and registered as bristletooth due to the trigger hairs on the inside of the Venus flytrap's trap. If you didn't know this, the Venus flytraps have three trigger hairs on each side of the trap, and these trigger hairs is what actually allows the plants to trap around an insect. You may also notice that the inside of the trap can go super, super dark red color, which is also a very beautiful characteristic of this plant. Next up, we have Venus flytrap cupped trap. Now this trap is super, super interesting because the most further away part of the trap is actually fused together and it makes it look like the trap is kind of a cup and that's where they get the name cupped trap from. Now, one thing that I really dislike about Venus flytrap cultivars is that you get some Venus flytrap cultivars, for example, pom pom, which looks really good and is kind of interesting, but they can't actually catch insects. And I personally don't want to have a Venus flytrap that can't catch its own insect, but many people like the Venus flytraps that have different looking traps. And I mean, yeah, I would still get it if I, if I was offered it, but I would still choose a plant that can actually catch its traps over ones that can't. And the cupped trap is a Venus flytrap that can catch its own food for itself, which is super interesting seeing as the trap is slightly changed and you wouldn't expect it to be able to catch its own food. Next up, we have one of my most favorite Venus flytraps, one that I've wanted for many, many years and still have not been able to get for myself because of a lack of availability. This Venus flytrap is called Schuppensteel 2. Yes, 2 because there are two different types of them, Schuppensteel 1 and obviously Schuppensteel 2. They are slightly different to each other simply in that Schuppensteel 2 has more relaxed and calmed down ridges and bumps on the petiole or the leaf of the Venus flytrap compared to Schuppensteel 1. Either way, I would love to have at least one of these plants in my collection as they both have these super, super interesting ridges that you can see and both of the traps obviously still work to catch insects and they have nice dark red traps, which I really, really love. So that's it on the top six most well-known and famous Venus flag traps in the world. Now let's talk a little bit more about our Drosera Adelaide that has suffered from some gnat larvae. A couple of weeks ago, we made a species spotlight on our tiny Drosera Adelaide seedling and when we zoomed in and made a time lapse of the plant feeding, I realized, and so did many of our subscribers, that there are tons of fungus gnat larvae on the pot. And what this means is that these larvae go around and they eat the chlorophyll and the fungus and the tiny little roots of our Drosera Adelaide seedling and obviously this can kill all of the seedlings that we have in the pot. So let's go check, check out the plant and spray it again and make sure that there's no fungus gnat larvae available to kill our seedlings. And here we have our pot of seedlings guys. Look how big our seedling has gotten since we last fed it. That's literally seven days since we fed it together. I'm not sure if the growth is due to the fish flakes or if it's due to it just growing up and getting better sunlight in its new position. But either way, the, the seedling is getting much bigger than this. And in a couple of weeks time, we will do some liquid fertilizers on our Adelaide and our tiny Drosera Regi to see if that will make them grow any quicker as opposed to just using the fish flakes. So I can't see any larvae on the surface, but what I will do is spray the surface and do a short time lapse to see if we see any one of these fungus gnat larvae busy wriggling around. So let's start spraying it. So there we go guys, that's another 25 mils of the spray. Make sure you wash your hands because this stuff can be bad for you. But I'm just going to zoom in onto our little seedling over here. And let's see if we can spot any larvae busy crawling around. And so we can tell if this is really working or not. So I'll see you guys in 10 minutes. And there we go guys, hopefully there are no more fungus gnats in this media here. I can't see any, but we will be able to tell better 
in the time lapse. So let's go put these guys back in their places and give them a little bit of water. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel as we post a video every single week about carnivorous plants. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, so let's go water up our Venus fly traps and check out all the other water trays and see if they need to get filled too. Yep, they're all good. Just topped up the water for the utricular area because they need a very high water table. So, yeah, all the plants are growing really well.